Welcome to Red Oak Grove Church of the Living God online broadcast, where Elder Adrian Ivey is pastor. We are located at 287 County Road 154 in Shannon, Mississippi. We pray that your heart is uplifted and your mind is renewed as you listen to the Word of God. Let us now tune in to the service already in progress. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you now. To say thank you, God. We thank you, God, for your grace. We thank you, God, for your mercy, God. God, we thank you for your love, God. God, we thank you, God, for loving us as much as you do, God. God, and we'd like to say thank you tonight, God. We thank you for all that you've done, God, how you kept us, God, how you've clothed us, Lord, how you brought us from a mighty long way tonight. We'd like to say thank you for it, God. Thank you for all that you're doing, God. We ask you now, oh God, that you might speak to and through. Allow your spirit, O oh God, to manifest himself in this place, God, that we would hear from you, God, that your word would, would go forth, God, with clarity, God, that you would just have your way tonight, God, and we are going to say thank you for it, God. We ask you, O oh God, to move me out of the way, God, and, and just have your way. Speak to your people, for we know we need you in such an hour as such as this, God, and we say thank you now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3. We'd like to say um, thank you once again for tuning in. We'd like to speak to our Red Oak Grove Church family to let you know we do love you and we miss you. Let you know we are praying for you. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your calls, for your checking in. Just to let you know we are praying for you and we are praying with you. Habakkuk chapter Three, not only you, all of those who are listening um, or tuning in on Facebook, we want to let you know we do appreciate you. We are thank you for we thank you for tuning in. We we we, we are hearing great things and we we appreciate you. Just like for you to know that we 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 we, we continue to uh, ask you for your prayers and we continue to pray for you in the midst of this uh, tr in the midst of these trying times. Habakkuk chapter three. I want to read a couple of verses. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 3, beginning at verse 17. And it reads, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. 19, the Lord God is my strength, and he'll make my feet like hind's feet, and he'll make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my string instruments. Rebecca chapter 3, I would like to talk for a few minutes from this thought. Even in the midst of tough times, I still have a praise. Have to be honest with all of you who are listening, 2020 has been one of the most challenging years of our time. We're facing an enemy every day we can't, we can't see the possibility of us uh, being infected by it is high every day. 2,168 cases of COVID-19 just today and 28 new deaths. On top of all that, we still have our issues at home. Husbands are doing all they know how to do and seem like the doing ain't enough. Wives are uh, walking their feet. Mm in the ground and their feet are hurting and it seems as if that is, isn't enough. Children are, are, are going crazy over the uh, 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 virtual schooling that they, they have to do and they don't seem to get it. Bills are still piling up. Bank account is getting low or on zero and on top of all that, we're living in a world that has a leader who's rebellious, arrogant, and narcissistic. And to go with that, he has followers who, who, who refuse to stand up for what's right, who refuse to stand up for justice, who refuse uh, to just speak the truth to the leader 
that's in the office. It seems as if people are, are growing colder and, and colder. Seems like the world is waxing worse and worse. Folk want to put other folks down to make themselves feel good. The spirit of pride and, and arrogance seem to be the new norm. When you turn the TV on, folks are killing folks for no reason. Sad part about it, they're getting away with it, as it seems. And, 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 and sometimes you could sit back and wonder or ask yourself, may not say it out loud, but, but, but you would ask yourself, where is God in the midst of, of these tough tough times because, uh, you know, I don't know if you know it or not, I, I, I sometimes sit and wonder uh, to myself or say to myself, we really need God to do something before it's too late. Seems to be the problem that Habakkuk the prophet had in Habakkuk chapter 3. He found himself in a position to where he, he was confused. He was, he, was, he was confused about what God was doing. Mm. What the have you ever, ever been there? In the midst of these tough times, we've lost loved ones. We, we, we are the bearers of, 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 of burdens, and, 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 and oftentimes we wonder what's God what is he? What is he? What is he doing? Back of the prophet had that issue, and, 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 and if I could just point out to you and say to you, he understood a few things. He understood that, 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 that judgment one day will come. He understood that, but that was not. That wasn't his, his main issue. His main issue was not with, 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 with the people who were doing wrong. His, his main issue was not with, with, with was, uh, what was coming along in a sense, but his main issue was how could God, being who he was, continue to allow this to go on and seemingly do, do nothing? How? How? But when you get to the third chapter, it was, seems as if he was just praising God and, and leaping for joy. When you look at that 18th verse, he said, I, I will rejoice. But the question is, how do you move from a place of worry, fear, and stress to a place of praise? Glad you asked. Rebecca the prophet uh, lets us know a few things. One thing he does let us know in this text, he said you need to allow prayer to be a priority in your life. When you look at this thing, Rebecca the prophet, he prays not only in the third chapter, but he prays in the first chapter when he cried out to God. He allowed prayer to be a priority. I know when you come to church, that's what you hear all the time. Just pray. Pray about it. And Habakkuk the prophet, he, he gives us, or he is a great example of trying to teach us to pray. But notice what his prayer was. He said, Lord, how long will I cry to you? I wonder how do you feel when you pray and you sing to be persistent in your prayer and your prayer don't produce the results that you're looking for. Seems to be Habakkuk the prophet's problem in this text because he, he cried out. He prayed to the Lord. He made prayer his, his priority. Can I stop and tell you, prayer is a good thing. Prayer should be the priority that you and I uh, 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 should position ourselves in, not just when times are tough, but we ought to make it a priority in our life. Becca teaches us to let prayer be a uh, Priority, but, but, but I like this thing because Habakkuk is real honest. He's, 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 he's not like most church or religious folk. He's, he's real honest because when he prays, he asks God a question. 
that posed a problem for me because I've been brought up in a tradition to where when you have questions, you don't question God. I'm sure y'all heard that before. You know, you done heard some leader uh, 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 tell you, you know, don't question God or you don't question God. I had trouble with that because, you know, if, if, if you don't ask a question, you won't get an answer. And even God himself yeah. asked or said this. He said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So how can I know something if I don't ask a question? I went to Habakkuk and I asked Habakkuk now, now, now I've been traditioned this way and Habakkuk said to me, he said now, now tell me if God say uh, his people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, how are you going to deal with that? He said, tell me how are you going to deal with ask and it shall be given. He, he said, how are you going to deal with, 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 with passages in the Bible if you don't ask God a question? How are you going to deal with when the disciples ask Jesus a question? How are you going to deal with it? I said the best way that I, uh, the folks that, 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 that taught me the best way that um, they dealt with it is just to say, don't question God. So now I need some help in this matter because a lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are going through some hard things in their life and they've been traditioned to say, I don't question God. Need some help with this thing. But he said, he said, it's not in questioning him. It's the attitude that you use when you ask a question. He said, you can't go to God and question God's deity of who he is. He's God. And beside him, there is no other. So now I, I have to understand something. You got to go to him the right way. Can I help somebody? You can ask God questions because if you don't, you won't ever get an answer to your question. So it is now, Habakkuk the prophet, he helps me out because he, he tells me, you can ask God a question. So now, this is what he do. He makes prayer a priority, and he prays to God, and he asks God, God, how long shall I cry unto you? How long, Lord, are you going to allow all of this injustice to go on? How long, Lord, are you going to allow me to go through these tough times? He said, how long? He cries out to God. He prays to God. I have to uh, you, uh, uh, make you aware of some things when you pray. When you do pray, God may not answer you the way that you expect. He may not answer you the way that you expect what's going on in the text. Uh, this is what's going on in the text. Babylon was about to come in and take uh, Judah captive. Habakkuk the prophet was looking at what uh, the nation of Judah was doing. Uh, Judah looking at what they had going on. They had all kind of violence going on. They had all kind of lawlessness going on. They had all kind of evil going on. And so Habakkuk prays to God and he wanted God to do something about it based on who he was. And so he prays and he asks God a question, how long, he, how long, Lord, are you going to allow this injustice to go on? Habakkuk to me seems to, uh, 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 to not understand God in this situation. What do you mean, preacher? Seemed like to me Habakkuk was wanting God to do something about his people. And God say, Habakkuk, I hear your prayer. I'll tell you all something. Many times when you pray, God say, I hear. I hear when you, when you pray. I'm not deaf. I can hear exactly what you're trying to say to me. God is trying to tell us, you know, I hear you. But you know, a lot of us mistake God's silence for inactivity. Ooh. A lot of us uh, uh, mistake God's silence 
for inactivity. Habakkuk must have been the same way because he cried out to God and it seems to him as if God wasn't doing anything and Habakkuk, uh, 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 I mean, and, and God answered Habakkuk. Can I tell y'all something? In the midst of tough times when you pray to God, God, he may not answer you the way that you want. Your situation may get worse. Woo. Your situation may get worse. How do you know? I asked Habakkuk, what did God say to you? He said, the Babylonians are going to come. Oh, And when he said that, it seems to me Habakkuk, he had to take a seat because he couldn't understand why God would use a nation like Babylon to chastise his people. Let me say this. I said, Habakkuk, what really was God trying to do? He said, he say, I thought God would do something different. The lesson that you and I need to learn is we need to uh, trust God in the midst of this situation. He said, because one thing about God, God, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. For Habakkuk, he said, now, God, now you're going to allow this nation to come in and this nation could possibly destroy. God said, no, 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 no. I'm going to allow this thing to happen, but I'm not going to destroy my people. I'm going to deliver my people. I'm not going to crush my people. I'm going to correct my people. I wonder if you're going through this tough time for correction. I wonder if we're going through this tough time for deliverance. I wonder if God is using the tough situations that we're going through to deliver us, to correct us. Somebody need to know God is doing this thing not to kill us, but to correct us. I know we're in 2020, and, 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 and many of us, you know, we, we, we really don't uh, discipline our children like, like our parents really discipline us. You know, it's a little different. Now, you can't really discipline your, your child today in 2020 from the world standpoint. If you whoop your child, that's abuse. But God teaches us he chastens those that he loves. And so now Habakkuk seems to be having this problem. He's wrestling with this problem. And then he began to understand that God is trying to chasten his people. God is trying to correct his people. That's just a side note. He, he, he says prayer should be a priority. And sometimes when you pray, sometimes you need to just stand still. That's what Moses was trying to teach us in Exodus chapter 14. He says, uh, he says, he says, he says, fear not and stand still. Sometimes you need to sit still. That's what Ruth teaches us in Ruth 3.18. And, and she said, uh, sit still until uh, 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 the king, uh, until thou know how uh, God shall handle the matter, Psalms 46 and 10 uh, teaches us uh, we should be still. Sometimes when you're going through tough times and God may be trying to uh, chasten us, correct us, deliver us, God may, may be trying to do this thing and, and sometimes we just need to stand still, uh, sit still, and be still. Uh, Habakkuk the prophet, notice what he did. He, 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 he stood up upon his watch and, and he said, I'm going to just wait to see what God will say about this matter. So Habakkuk had a problem because a lot of time my biggest problem is, is waiting. I live in a, in a fast world and waiting sometimes seems not to be one of my uh, better attributes in waiting. He says one thing about waiting, you have to know who you're waiting on. Sometimes when you and I are waiting, we're waiting for one of us to do something. 
But Habakkuk the prophet, he teaches us, when you pray, you need to wait upon the Lord. <laughs> he waited. He got upon his watch and he, 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 he waited. He, he waited to see what God was going to do. Can I tell you, it's okay to just wait. Waiting carries the idea of just trusting God and allowing God to work out the situation. Went to Rebecca and I said, Rebecca, now you got to help us understand this thing. He said, notice what's going on in the text. I'm complaining and crying to God because I wanted God to do something. And God says, well, I am doing something. He says, now I'm going to correct my people and I'm going to use Babylon to correct them. Rebecca said, hold on, God. I wonder why you would use somebody more wicked than your people to correct your people. He said, I need for you to wait on me. And then in chapter 2, you'll look at that thing. He said, I need to teach you a lesson, a very valuable lesson while you're going through tough times. He said, my people shall live by faith. Let me fast forward. I'm going to get out your way in just a minute. He said, he said, my people shall live by faith. Text say, title say, title say, uh, 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 the title say, in the midst of tough times, I still have a praise. The just shall live by faith. Man, how can I praise God in the midst of all these problems that I'm going through? Some folks have lost loved ones. Some folks, they ain't got no money. Some folks, they're barely making ends meet. Some folks are being talked about and ridiculed. Some folks don't know they left from their right. Some folks just ready to throw their hands up and holler. Tell me how can I praise? Habakkuk say, he said, this is how you can can praise the Lord. He said, praise is not predicated on your predicament. Say it one more time, preacher. Praise is not predicated on your predicament. Say it another way. I don't praise God based on my circumstance. Habakkuk in chapter 3, just fast forward, the just shall live by faith. In chapter 3, when you get down to that verse, he says, he says, the fig tree shall not blossom. He says, the fruit won't be on the vine. He says, the olive going to fail. Fields going to yield no meat. Flock going to be cut off and there shall be no herd in the, in the stall. He said, uh, uh, if everything fail, your praise is not predicated on your predicament. He said, you ain't got no money in the bank. If you ain't got no good house to live in, if you ain't got no, no car that's running the best, um, best of the best, if you ain't got no clout, no status, or no position, it's not predicated on whether you should praise or not. How do you know? Because he, say, he says, yet. Yet means before all is done. Yet means in the time remaining. Yet means even still. He says, even still, I will rejoice. I, 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 I will, yet, 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 yet. Problem for me because you have to move from one place to the next. Maybe God is allowing us to experience some things like he did. Habakkuk, you can see the condition in verse 17, and now you see the experience in chapter 18. What happens in these two verses is a choice that you and I should make. I know it's hard sometimes, and sometimes we just don't feel like praising God when, when we're hurt. And sometimes we don't really just feel like praising God when we're going through. Sometimes we don't, we don't really feel like, like, like praising him. I, 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 know, I, I know it's like that sometimes. Habakkuk felt like that sometimes. But, 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 but notice he had to move from one place to the next. And yet, and still, when you get to the 17th verse of that third chapter, nothing has changed. The Babylonians were still coming. His people were still messed up. 
problems was still there. But he says, yet. He says, before all of that's done, he says, in the time remaining, he says, even still, what are you trying to say? Habakkuk said, in the midst of all of this, I really don't understand what God is doing, but I'll rejoice. I really don't understand why he's doing what he's doing, but I'll, I'll rejoice. I, 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 I really don't understand what he's doing, but in the midst of all of this, I will rejoice. Make it plain, Mr. Preacher, man. He said, if I ain't got no money in the bank, I'm going to rejoice. If, I ain't, if, if the doctor give me a bad report, I'm still going to rejoice. If, if they talk about me, uh, I'm going to rejoice. Even in the midst of my bad situations, trying to do the right thing, I'm still going to rejoice. But the question becomes, how? How can you rejoice? Number one, for most of us, we're looking at everything around us. For most of us, we're looking at our circumstance and we're looking at our situation. And, and, and Habakkuk the prophet, he says, you got to make the conscious choice because one thing about prayer, prayer doesn't always change. Huh? Okay, Bishop uh, Paul Morton, I understand, but can I debate with you for a moment? Because one thing about him, he sings a song that says prayer changes things. And when we hear that song, we love that song, that song, I agree, but prayer doesn't always change your circumstance. Whoo! That messed a lot of us up because that's the idea that most of us get, that when we pray, it changes our circumstance. Now, Rebecca the prophet, I had a problem with that song, and I went to Rebecca and I said, Rebecca, now, I said, I said, that song is a wonderful song. He said, that song is true. But it ain't always necessarily so. He said, because I've been in a position to where I prayed and my circumstance didn't change. So I asked the question, I said, what did change? He said, I changed. So prayer don't always change your condition or your circumstance, but it can change your character and your choice. When you pray, God has a tendency to allow you to go through some things just to change not your circumstance, but to change you. When you're going through a hard time, how can I praise? Yet I will. I will rejoice. I'm reminded of a, of a woman who was near and dear to me, and, 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 and I looked at her, and I, I, I remembered. I, 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 I had to sit down and just allow my mind to go back just to think about examples of people who, I, uh, who has affected my life that I, uh, I watched them uh, go through hard times. Remember a lady, and she's not my mother, but she's my grandmother. I remember my grandmother, she didn't have a, a, a elaborate big house or she didn't have four or five cars and she didn't have a big bank account or a, a big bank roll. She didn't have a, a closet or a wardrobe full of, 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 of elaborate clothing. She had just what, what, what she needed, but yet and still I watched her go through tough times. I, I watched her go through hard times. I watched her go through times where her body was racking with pain. I watched her go through times where her bank account was low. I watched her go through times where folks would talk about her. I watched her go through uh, folks mistreating her. I watched her go through tough times. And yet, I still watched her rejoice and joy in God. And my mind had to go back and I had to ask questions that I didn't understand then, but I understand now her, her rejoicing and her joy was not in what she was going through, how she was going through it. It was not in that. But her joy was in the Lord. Her, her rejoicing was uh, in knowing the fact that she served a God who, who, who was bigger than that. She served a God who was bigger than her sickness, 
bigger than her financial issues, bigger than the folk who were talking about her, and somehow, some way, she still managed to rejoice. In fact, I think somebody need uh, to take that spirit of my grandmother and, and praise God, not based on what you're going through, but based on who he is. Because he is God and God all by himself. He is the creator of all mankind because he is he is God. He, he, he's the one that you can go through that will deliver you in the midst of your trouble. He is the one that that, that can hold you up when, when you want to fall down. He is the one that, that, that knows everything. He, he knows exactly what he's doing, how he is doing it. He knows why he is doing what he do, and he know, knows what everything. He knows. He, he, can I just say it like that? He knows. He knows Rebecca the prophet. He must have understood this thing because he found himself Rejoicing. Rejoicing in the text means he started leaping for joy. How could you leap for joy? And you say there ain't no money in the, the account. How could you leap for joy? He said, because I'm, I'm joying and I'm leaping because I know God. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think. I, I, I'm rejoicing because I, my trust and my faith is in, in God, even in the midst of, uh, of doubt, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of, of danger, in the midst of judgment, in the midst of all this. He says, I will rejoice and I'll joy in the God of my salvation, in the God of my Deliverance. He says, he says, now uh, uh, I need for you just to praise him in the midst of your predicament. He says, you got to make the choice yourself to praise God, even in the midst of tough times. He says, yet I, I will praise him. But not only that, notice uh, you see the problem, you see, you see uh, the problem, and then you, uh, you look at the praise and notice the provision. The Lord God is, yes, sir, uh, that's it, and I'm through with y'all. Uh, the Lord God is my strength. That's what uh, my grandmother uh, believed in. She understood God was the strength of her life. She, she understood that God was able to, 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 to take her from, from one level to the next. She understood God will, would do some things. I, how do you know? Because her favorite song uh, that she used to sing, she says, uh, um, uh, dark clouds may rise, stormy winds may blow. Uh, yeah. But I have found a savior, and he's sweet. I know he's sweet enough to take me through all the dangers that I'm going through. He's sweet enough to walk with me in a hospital when they diagnose me with any kind of disease. He's sweet enough to hold my hand when I'm weak. He's sweet enough to lift me up when I'm, when I'm down. He's, he's sweet enough. And Rebecca the prophet, when I think about him, he writes in the 19th verse, he said the provision is of the Lord because the Lord God is my strength. He'll make my feet like hind's feet. Can you pause right there for a moment and let me explain this thing about hind's feet. Hind's feet, he talks about a deer. And the deer was a female deer, and, and the female deer would, would, would run up the mountain. And, and when they run up the mountain, they were on dangerous ground. But, but one thing about that, that hind or that doe or that deer, they had their feet planted solid and firm. One foot would go in front of the other. They would never slip. They would never stumble. They never go left or they never go right. They would walk one foot in front of the other. Habakkuk the prophet was trying to teach us one thing. He says, God is my strength. He says, God is the source of my life. God give me just what I need so my feet don't slip. God give me just what I need. Uh, so, so he give me just what I need so my feet don't slip, that I don't fall uh, by the way. My grandmother understood this. How can I praise in the midst of tough times? Notice the provision that you have. The Lord is. 
I'm done. The Lord is my strength. Your challenge and my challenge is, is to make sure the Lord is my strength. Because when God is my strength, I'm strong even in weakness. When God is my strength, it's not that I have the strength. It is God becomes my strength. When God is my strength, I can run and not be weary. When God is my strength, I can walk and not faint. When God is my strength, I can praise in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of your problem, in the midst of your situation, in the midst of all that you're going through. Number one, you got to understand that prayer must be a priority. Number two, you got to realize that you don't praise based on your predicament. Prayer is not based on your predicament. Prayer is based on the God that you serve. Last thing you got to understand is God will provide for you. God will provide for you. I said God will provide for you. Somebody need to get that God will. Somebody ready to pull their hair out their head. But, but you got to know God will provide for you, for Habakkuk the prophet, God provided an answer, may not be the answer that he necessarily wanted, but he made the resolve. God, if don't nothing good happen, if my circumstance don't change, I'll praise you because you're God. And God say, if you can just praise me and trust me, he says, I'm working this thing out because I love you too much to leave you like you are. How can you praise in the midst of your problem? Because you got God on the throne and he's dealing with your situation. I know it may not seem that way. A lot of times we can't see his hand moving. But God is saying to us, it's all right, bring your questions to me. I can handle them. Make sure you come humble and low and don't question who I am, but you have questions, ask me. Because nowhere in the text did God chastise Rebecca the prophet for asking them a question. So God says, bring them to me. I can handle every situation. But remember this, I'm never still. I'm always moving. So praise me in the midst of of your problem. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your word, God. We thank you, God, for your people, God. God, we know that you know what's going on. You know what each one of us face, God. You know the tough time that we're going through, God. And if it's on us, lead, guide, and direct us, God, that we will walk the way you would have us to walk and talk the way you would have us to talk, God. But God, we ask you to lead us in the way that you would have us to go. Touch your people now, God. You got some folks that are hurting. We're going through some trying times, God. And some of us, we don't even know, God. We're wondering what's going on. But yet tonight, we're going to make a resolve, God. We're going to praise you in the midst of this predicament. We're going to give you glory, God, because we'll know you're able, God. You're able to either carry us through or you're able to keep us as we go through, God. So we ask you to keep your people and carry your people and comfort them on their way out, God. And we'll just praise you and say thank you because you are God and God all by yourself, God. We pray, oh God, for each and every one that is, that's listening, God, for you know the issue. You know the problem, God. We ask you to deal with it. Deal with it that they may give you a praise, that they may have a testimony. I went to God in prayer. And God handled that thing. So have your way, God. We say thank you and we love you. We pray, oh God, for each and every one. God, we pray for their families. We pray for their homes. You said in your word, pray for all men, God. So we pray for this president. We pray for those who are making the laws, God. All those who are in those uh, high positions, those who are uh, making laws in God. God, we're asking you to just touch them, God, and not only them, touch their families, God. We pray, oh God, for the law enforcement, God. We pray for everybody that is grieved tonight, God, that are having issues. We're praying, oh God, that you would meet needs, God. Give us the right word to speak when they cross our path, God. And not only them, God, we pray for your people now. Bless us and keep in comfort. We say thank you and we love you. 
In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for joining us today at Red Oak Grove Church of the Living God. I pray on today that this encouraging message sinks into your heart and do well in your life as this week comes and goes. Join us next week for our service starting at 1130 a.m. Thank you for listening. We will see you next time. Through Givelify, you can sow a seed. Just download the free simple and secure Givelify app on any Apple or Android device and type Red Oak Grove Holiness Church as place of worship. Then tap Give to sow your seed. While on our giving page, you will have the option to create a profile, which will give you the ability to log in at any time to view your prior online donations or to make changes to any recurring gifts you may have scheduled. Like us on Facebook.com 2013 Red Oak Grove Church and don't forget to subscribe to our new YouTube page by searching for Red Oak Grove C-O-L-G. Thank you and be blessed. Give today with Givelify.